all right so what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy and we are back with another seven deadly sins grand cross video but this one i'm going to be going over the first 10 characters that i'm most likely going to get to level 80 because in case you didn't know the recent update brought in chapter 9 it brought in demon meliodas blue demon meliodas and it also allows us to uh, limit break our characters and get to level 80 which is very very important especially for pvp because if you're at 75 and your enemies are at level 80 just expect to die faster expect to do less damage and expect to have a worse experience in pvp and you do not want that because pvp is a massive part of grand cross honestly it's my favorite part i spend so much time playing it that i realistically should be recording some of my fights because they are super freaking hilarious to hear me rage when i'm losing and talk shit like crazy when i'm winning anyways moving on that's my personal opinion right which characters am i going to be getting to level 80 first because as you can see um my my marvel future fight habit or addiction or whatever like conditioning from playing future fight for almost five years now right it's basically blended into this game where i just realistically love building characters and because of that this is how my box ended up where i have so many characters that you are some of them are basically never even used yet right but one good thing about grand cross is every character for the most part has some value whether they offer an additional cosmetic for a character that you do use or a raid or a boss fight will pop up later on in the future and they have one ability that makes them super op for that for example like this um let me go up this um blue deanne she's a really good combo for king like his ultimate but before we got the ifrit boss raid i never used her never built her never even had her but once that raid popped up and i saw how useful she was going to be i immediately got her and 75 her and she's probably going to get to 80 at some point but she's not going to be one of my first 10. that being said who are my first 10 going to be keep in mind pvp heavily dictates the order in which i am going to be pushing my characters to level 80 and just the ones that I really find a lot of value in the ones that I use the most and that's what you should look at like if you don't play a lot of pvp then you should realistically look at look at the characters that you use the most and then go from there but you should make sure that your pvp team at least for ungeared is at level 80 regardless of who you're using because you want to get actually once you get the champion one you can forget about pvp team for ungeared but you should ideally be doing ungeared and geared at some point so you want to build towards that so you get those pvp points number one character on this list regardless of whether or not you are doing pve or pvp it is the goat sin gother okay this man is absolutely essential you need to get him to level 80 no matter what and he should be your very first one the reason for that is very simple this rank up card is so busted. It is unique to just go through and just this go through, right? And it basically eliminates a lot of the RNG that you need to rank up card to because to get a card from one star to two star, you need two of those cards. And sometimes, man, like the fight will go on and you, you can never predict when you're going to get that second card. And sometimes you really need that second card to basically turn the tide of battle, whether it's PvE or PvP. But just having even the level one, right? For Gother is just really awesome, but once you get into level two, it just ranks up everybody's card. And level three, it freaking ranks up everybody's card and increase all of their basic stats by twenty percent for three turns. Like this is absolutely essential. Not to mention, if Gother is not getting hit, he's offering even more value to your team. Fifty percent more attack stats is absolutely mental. Plus, his freaking ultimate drains their ult gauge and rolls them back and basically just basically wins the fight for you. Right, I'm just saying, because if they can never ult on you because you keep ult rushing Gother, right? Unless your Gother is really underbuilt, you're gonna win. So number one character on this list for me, definitely getting him as soon as this video is over. Like next time you see me, he's gonna be at 80. Facts. Okay. Second character on here, right beside Gother, is Blue King. Blue King is so freaking useful, man. I, by the way, I have the whole cosmetic for the final boss king, but I like matching it up like this. I like this chastity fold and I like this outfit together. So anyway, Blue King is so freaking useful. Like his ult hits super hard and I can't wait to at some point 6-6 six, six it. Plus he can purify and heal. And sometimes, man, trust me, he will crit heal. And even though it says 
50%, sometimes it will take your whole team from damn near dead to back to full health. I'm just saying, man, like King is super freaking useful, especially if you have Hellbrum and you put him and Red Hellbrum together, super toxic combination, okay? So yeah, my second unit I'm getting to um, level 80 is Blue King, even though the meta is kind of shifting a little bit, right? Where Eskinor is on every team and Eskinor is basically the counter to King because he can just cruel sun, two bop and King is dead. But the thing is, King puts the fear of God into everyone because they know how deadly he can be if left unchecked. And because of that, they have to single target burst him down. And then that leaves your other units open to possibly counter Eskinor or whoever else is on the team. So even if King dies, like in the second turn of the fight and he never gets off an attack, that takes pressure off your entire team. Keep in mind, you have three characters on the field at all times. Okay, so that leaves 66% of your team open to do whatever you want with it. They're just focusing on killing this man first. And if you don't have King, they're probably going to focus on Gotha, which again will free up other characters on your team, right? So that's how you got to look at it. And giving them higher stats by getting them to level 80 will definitely help. Next character is definitely going to be the Sunshine God, Lord Flexador, okay? You definitely want to get my man to, oh my gosh, level 80. As soon as this video is done, he's going up. Like, elegant blow does so much freaking damage, boys. Plus, fills up his old gauge, and then you have the cool son that removes their buffs. Who decided you could buff, right? And plus, you got his freaking unique that makes it so he can't be debuffed when he's at the pinnacle of his power. And then this is basically like a one-shot if you have it at like 4-6. For me, I only have it at 2-6 because I'm out here scrubbing, okay? Anyways, man, it'd be like that. So, Escador is going to be number three for me. And if you know anything about me, man, you know number four got to be my boy, King Arthur in this motherfucker. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Um, I love Arthur. He's been one of my favorite characters since this game started. I have every piece of cosmetic for him, every weapon, everything, bro. I love him. He's so freaking good. Even before he became the meta, right? He just realistically just appealed to my soul. Like, I absolutely love Arthur. I love the fact that he can shut down King even though he's off type. He can disable um, King's ability to heal and that definitely adds a little bit of value to him. Plus, his freaking um, ultimate hits really hard. I have that 6-6. Six, six. Wish it did a little bit more damage sometimes, but most of the time it gets the job done. Plus, his unique buffs all human allies, which includes Lord Flexa Noor, okay? I'm not sure if once, actually, that's a good question. Does this deactivate once Eskinor reaches full old gauge? I'm pretty sure it does, but once he uses his ult, it reactivates again, I think. I think that's how it would work. Anyways, um, he's really good. Plus... The level 3 buff is really nasty. The uh, mono red comp is actually going to get a big hit this time around because blue demon Melio is going to cut through them. And if they can't get that level 3 buff up in, within two turns, he's going to freaking corrode them and they're going to die. So mono red is going to take a big hit, which will affect his value just a little bit, but he won't tank. He will never tank, bro. He's so good, right? I can't wait to get the other Arthur. I see the JP version, they have another Arthur, but it is what it is. The next one is actually gonna be a character that I use pretty much everywhere. Like pretty much all of my team comp includes these two, well, to be honest, one of these three, right? So they gotta be on there. Green Merlin, okay? Green Merlin offers a lot of freaking value just from the extra old gauge, the uh, perfect Q, which you can get some extra protection even at level one. And then at level three just offers even more, right? And then you have the drain. Honestly, the only way Merlin could be better in my eyes is if this was a drain and a stun, right? And then this was like a drain and a two-third stun. But either way, man, Merlin is fan-freaking-fastic, okay? And I can't wait to 6-6 six, six her and have her do even more damage. Love her. Freaking love Merlin, okay? Moving on. Next character that I'm definitely going to be freaking getting to... Uh, where is that? Where is that? He's down here. Going to get to 80. Hey, not you, Deldry. Okay, you're cute and all. Don't wave at me like that, okay? Kind of winning me over, but you're not getting 80. This man right here. Just pulled him. That's why he's at level one. You know and I'm saying his little crap top, tank top thing, but it's all good, man. Demon Meliodas, okay? We're definitely going to get him up to 80 probably today, right? So check me out, man. This Pierce is nasty, okay? Nasty, bro. You're going to be able to, like, basically two turn the entire team if you actually, like, so honestly. If you have a pure set on him and you take him into geared PvP, he's going to cut through people. But that's not his entire value, right? You look at this freaking corrosion, bro. It's actually nasty. Like, if they don't have Blue King, let's say you focus down Blue King and kill him first. 
um yeah good luck to whoever you're fighting because they're gonna die bro the man's gonna freaking take away 15 percent of the remaining hp for two turns even at level one that's 30 percent gone of their remaining hp though keep that in mind right this is 20 percent for three turns right and then check this out <laughs> it gets even worse boys 20 percent of their max hp right so if they start off with 100k and they're already down to like, I don't know, 20k, bro, they're just going to die, drop dead from this. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, bro. Like, and that's three turns. So that's basically 60% of their HP gone if they can't cleanse, bro. They literally have to kill. And it's, this doesn't just go away. It, it would be worse. Like, let's say if after he dies, this thing stopped. Nah, bro. It's, it keep going even if he's dead, bro. Like, it's, it's mental. Okay? He's mental. Um, Check this out. Unaffected attack disabled effects when the hero's ultimate gauge is four or less, which means you cannot attack disable this guy. Jesus, it's actually crazy. So, mm, Gother cannot stop him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, next character I'm gonna get to 80 right after Demon Meliodas is another Pierce God. Obviously, Red Hauser, love him for farming, but you shouldn't be 75 in your farming team because it, sorry, not your 75. You shouldn't be 80 in your farming team because at 75, they're good enough, okay? Um, go, he doesn't have gear on him, by the way. None of, none of these characters that I'm showcasing right now don't have the proper gear on because I move around my gear from time to time. So, yeah, Hauser has a lot of value, right? Increasing human allies. But the Pierce boys, the Pierce boys, the Pierce boys. If you love Hauser, you're going to love Demon Meliodas. I think um, Hauser's value is going to drop a little bit in the eyes of many people with this release of um, Demon Meliodas because he's a hard counter to Hauser. Plus, that corrosion is nasty. Plus, he can never be a tax seal if he has less than four alt gauge. Uh, it's just crazy, man. So, yeah. Um, plus, AoE wipe. This is the one area where Hauser has um, Demon Meliodas beat. Demon Meliodas, single target nuke, right? Hauser, 14 nuke plus taking away all gauge, right? Man, this guy's beastly. 6'6, six, six, by the way, boys. You know what I'm saying? Love Hauser. So I gotta get him up to 80 ASAP, like Rocky. Next character I've been rocking with heavy, been meaning to make a video on her is actually, where is she at? Uh, okay, why is she down here when you're supported by level? It's um, Blue Liz Hot. Really, really love her, man. Honestly, she's so good. Her unique increases allies HP by 12% per debuff. So if you're trying to debuff you, she's gonna get tankier the whole team actually, right? This skill actually hits really, really, really hard, right? You can actually like two tap people's go through and stuff. Sometimes even like a one tap at level three and then you can cleanse. She's gonna see some more play with Demon Meliodas running out there because you're gonna need to have somebody on your team to cleanse. If it's not Blue King, it's probably gonna be Blue Liz Hawk. So definitely, absolutely right want to consider her especially since this cleanse is actually better than king's cleanse because once she digests and removes that corrosion from demon meliodas she's gonna add extra resistance on your team so yeah plus she nukes boys i think i have her at five six right now like she can basically one tap even like the escanor right You're crazy right shit well that's an ungeared by the way ungeared and geared uh, I've never really put her up against an Eskimo. I usually just go for the safe bet, which is to just take out a Hauser or a Gotha, right? I need to play more geared PvP, though. I'm still low in the rankings because, uh, I, I don't know, I've been busy. Next character um, I want to get to AD really, really quickly is... Where is my mans? All right, just because I want to be super toxic. Um, okay, this is not ordered by level. Bro, I promise it. It's ordered by level, bro. So, yo, I, sometimes I don't get this, bro. It's ordered by level. But like we have like level 50 Kane here because he's God tier basically, right? Above like even Rim. I don't know why. Um I'll find him. I'll find him eventually. He's up there somewhere then. Oh my goodness, where is he? One of these days, boys. Six hours later. Oh wow, he's down here, right underneath Rim. Just because I want to be toxic. <laughs> We're gonna get um Hellbroom. Hellbroom to 80, right? Because he has the drain. Right, on the, even at level one, he has the drain, plus he has the, the freaking, you know what I'm saying, three alt gauge drain, and he does a lot of damage. You can sometimes, like, if you crit, almost kill an Eskino in one shot. Insane. Plus, you have the Petrify, and you have the ability to remove buffs, and yeah, he can buff himself based on how many people are still alive on the team. So you start off with him, he's strong as shit, bro. Green units, they feel it. 
they definitely feel it when the room is in place. Um, next character, last one on the list, long video, I know, is actually gonna be Jericho. Her damage is incredibly high for all kind of content, so I gotta respect it. Her unique is very, very good. She's definitely gonna see a lot of play, right? And with Blue Demon Meliodas out there, you wanna get him out of, bro, you wanna get him out of sight ASAP. So if you get first turn and you can basically nuke a, a Blue Demon Meliodas with a Green Jericho, go for that. Just go that two tap, three tap, done so, okay? Yeah, you definitely wanna do that. So I'm gonna try to uh, get her to 80 just in case I want to do like a little showcase and see if we can counter on Demon Meliodas with Jericho. Maybe like a Bond. Yeah, probably like a Bond thing. I might, I might pick up Bond, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I realistically might pick up um, Green Bond. I didn't get him on sale, but I think about it, it would be sick to do like a little comp with um, Green Bond and um, Green Jericho, basically just um, doing a little snatch, lowering their resistance, lowering everything, right? And then just like bursting them down with Jericho. I don't know. You'll probably do it with somebody else though um i'm gonna wrap it up right here guys thank you guys so much for watching this is basically the 10 units or so that i'm gonna be working heavily on getting up to 80 asap i have enough materials on hand to get like five or six of them up right the other four probably will come like in the next couple of days and then i'll probably start doing some showcases if you guys want to see demon meliodas asap the nomad but well, we're probably going to be pushing through chapter nine just in case the uh, daily rewards actually get improved i'm not sure if anything does get changed Right, but that should be your number one focus, guys. Push through um push through um the chapters just in case they start giving up maybe more chalices or more AP pots or stamina potions or even I'm saying more of these bad boys because those are ultra rare. All right, so push through as much of the story as you can. I'm gonna do the same, try and get it done today before reset. And I might make a couple videos like of a playthrough, or I might just start doing like I don't know, some showcases against different chapters or sorry, different parts of the same chapter.